Hello guys, welcome to Cartooning with Paul. Today, I'm going to show you how to draw spectacular Spider-Man. So, let's get started. Yes, guys, yes, I've been hearing your requests. I've got Spider-Man requests all over the place. So somebody had mentioned Spectacular Spider-Man enough times where I thought, I, I guess we'll start with Spectacular Spider-Man. So let's get started. All right, guys, so the first thing we want to do is we want to establish his stance, right? Um, now, you guys have been watching me draw um, uh, the Bruce Tim style for long enough uh, we got to go somewhere differently here. We're going to go outside of the comfort zone. Um, it's really not that outside of the comfort zone. But I'm drawing Peter Parker, right? Well, Peter Parker is not incredibly built. I mean, he certainly has more definition than I do. But, I mean, let's face it. He is um, He's supposed to be smaller, right? He's, he's a high school age student or in college or whatever, but... You know, I think what they did was they they really went with a younger, younger version. I think them going back and putting him back in high school was definitely the way to go. Um, when I was younger, um, the, the idea of Spider-Man, uh, he was an adult. You know, he was already graduated college and and he was doing adult things and it you know i mean it's fine i just that's how i knew spider-man to be so when they started to revamp him in the 90s and they threw him back in high school i didn't know what to think i i feel i went a little fast here um i do that when i'm sketching by myself i i go quickly um I try to remember to go a little slower for you guys, but um, kind of isn't what happened. Um, when I throw in the details, I'll go slower so that you guys can um, understand what I'm doing here. Yeah, I, uh, I really, I didn't mean to speed through that. Um, I'm going to continue going, and if it turns out to be a decent video, we'll go from there. Bear with me here. Uh, like I... Like I said, I, you guys may not even see this. So let's see. Uh, we've got clavicle lines here. The collarbone, right? So we want to throw in those lines in there. And give him his trapezius muscles. But I don't want to you know, go too far on that. Like I said, when I was a kid, Spider-Man had already grown up. Uh, he was in the newspapers, he was in the comic books, and he was he was an adult already. He wasn't anything that I could really relate to. You know, he and Mary Jane had gotten married, and it just... It was like, okay, yeah, Spider-Man's cool, but... I mean, he's... He's an adult, what am I going to do with that? I say that, and I loved Batman the most, so I don't know what my argument was. Okay. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's throw in some body shape here. I am fighting the urge to t Bruce Tim him up here. I got to keep him on model. Okay. Uh, let's see. He's got his pecs here. And then that straight line will help me keep everything in line. He's got, um, let's see. Where his trunks would be if he wore them. Let's, yeah, let's keep. I've got to do some tweaking here. So here, just draw with me while I fix this to keep him on model. The art style is an interesting one on this one. I got to be honest, I've never seen this show. I have seen some Spider-Man shows in my day. Uh, most notably was uh, The Amazing Spider-Man and Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends back in the 80s. Um, from there, Spider-Man seemed to kind of cool off a little bit for a little while. And then in the 90s, they started just pumping out one series after another. 2000s were, you know, 
more or less the, the, the same line of thinking. You know, uh, the, the movies are doing well, so they decided, let's just pump out as many different Spider-Man series as we can. Some of them were animated better than others. But honestly, I couldn't get into them. Um, okay, so Spider-Man has um, these great long feet on this series. Let's play that up. Yeah, we got the ball of the foot. We got the big toe. All right. Yeah, that works. Now, let's see. The red of his boots uh, topped off right about here. And right about here. Actually, his cap is angled a little bit more than that. Okay, so right above his um, the line where his trunks would be, that's where that V-shape is where it goes from the blue pants up to that red design for his chest. And that kind of goes around his waist, almost like a belt, except in the center here, we're going to go up his abdomen and up to his ribs. And then we're gonna go right up above his armpit, just like so. This side, you're gonna see a lot less of it because we're doing that foreshortening here for perspective. And now let's throw in those arms. They're very angular, so we're gonna we're gonna give him a bit of a bony shoulder there. And then I'm gonna give him his his uh, tricep up here, the bicep here. And then he has some muscular forearms and they're kind of angular like so. Now I told you that the, the blue line, the, the blue area goes up just above his armpit, right? And then it'll come around and it will be the inside, the bicep area of his arm. Okay, and it will follow all the way down here until we get into the like the gauntlet area of other superheroes, there'll be high gloves. So now it's all going to be red from here. So it's blue on the inside, red on the outside of the arm, all the way down to his fingertips. Let's um, keep it on model. This is a very different angular style that I'm used to drawing. So you're going to have to bear with me a little bit. And... Let's see. So we got this right here. We've got his shoulder in there. And then we've got his tricep. It kind of works like this. We'll go into his elbow here, the inside of his elbow. And then give him these really, really impressive looking forearms. We're going to see more of the red on the outside of his arm. So, let's throw it in like this. I want to keep that gauntlet area looking symmetrically here. And there we go. All of this is going to be red. You know, the last couple of superhero drawings I've done here I've struggled with the with the the fists looks like I need to practice them all over again I got away from it and it's kind of eluded me okay so now with this spider-man we go right in the center right over his sternum and we're gonna do a diamond shape like that a black diamond just like so and then we're going to draw a design like that. 
so he kind of looks like a moose head. And then we're going to draw in the bottom legs of that spider, just like that. And there we go. That is the spider emblem on his chest. We've got the pecs here like so. Now, they oversimplified the web structure of, of his costume. So, what we're going to do is we're going to draw one line like this, one like this. We got that one in the center. From right here, the bottom of his pecs, we're going to draw in that line like that. This is going to be so much easier than the last couple Spider-Man videos I tried to do. It was always down to when you put in the webbing. And it gets really, really complicated if you don't know what you're doing. And while I know what I'm doing, I, I found that I didn't know how to instruct it. But now with this character, they simplify this to no end. So I feel a little more confident about doing the webbing here for you. So that blue line will continue down here to give that red area that line for the webbing and then another one here. We're not doing any scallops in here because they simplified it to make it easier for the animators. Okay. So now we've got one line there. We've got a line that comes down here like this and then Yeah, I really I, I dig this for the simplicity. I'm not saying I would like to be on this animation team though. I don't know how. I don't know how the comic book illustrators can keep their sanity with all of the detail in the webbing on th this character. It would drive me up the wall. In the leg, I mean, they really made it nice and easy on us here. So now let's do the head here. This character has a very stylized, angled structure, right? So we got to remember that when drawing in the head. Those eyes are not going to be necessarily where I would normally put them. And they're certainly not going to necessarily be in the size that I would normally put them. Oh, see? Yeah, he has very big lenses on this mask. So just like anything else, just exactly what my what my uh, professors taught me in school draw what you see don't draw what you know now after a while being on this on this crew I'm sure I would know exactly where everything goes but if I were new on this crew I would be hugging those model sheets so tightly I'd probably be sleeping with them under my pillow Let's see, yeah. All right, the lenses kind of round out here and let the black part of the, the mask go out into that angle. Okay. So the head So the head is kind of angled like that. So it gives you the back of the cranium without getting too nuts.
gives you a nice narrow chin and then comes out into that jawline that meets with the back of the cranium there. Here's his neck. And again, they were very good to us on this webbing design. Fewer lines makes it much easier for an animator. Comes off that angle from the lens. This down there like that. Then over here. Back here like this. This line actually goes back here like that. So they're even nicer to me than I was giving them credit for. Normally Spider-Man has this, this uh, center of the web here. N not with this design. It just crosses right over. Just one big intersection. Okay. Now... We have webbing for the nose. It continues like this for the main part of the of the mouth area. I don't want to tell you how many times I have tried to do a Spider-Man tutorial for this channel because I've never liked how they came out. This one, this one I kind of like. All right, uh, let's see. Yeah. All right, well, there we go. Well, guys, if you like drawing comic book characters like this, I've got a whole playlist right here for you. I invite you to go click on that, check them out, and see what you want to draw next. I want to thank you guys so much for drawing with me today, and until the next video, we will see you later.